Hello, in this video, I'm going to talk about hyperlipidemia and dyslipidemia and exercise recommendations. Um, so first, what is hyperlipidemia? It's chronic elevations and fasting blood concentrations of uh, total cholesterol over 240 or triglycerides over 150. Then if in addition to those, we also have these other abnormalities, then we would call it dyslipidemia. Um, so that would be LDLs over 100, HDLs under 45 or under 55 for uh, 45 for men, 55 for women, and then total cholesterol uh, to HDL ratio of more than five. So it's hyperlipidemia with high total cholesterol and high triglycerides and dyslipidemia with those two uh, qualities, but also the LDL, HDL, and ratio of cholesterol to HDLs uh, being abnormal. Um, so cholesterol is a type of sterol, so that's a type of fat, and it is vital and important in the body. So cholesterol has a lot of really critical functions, um, including uh, helping to transport different types of fat throughout the body. Uh, it's an important part of our cell membranes. Um, it's critical for production of lipid-based hormones. So that would be like testosterone, estrogen, progesterone, uh, calcitriol, um, the list goes on, but it's important for fat-based hormones. Um, it's important for digestion and absorption of different types of fats and fat-soluble nutrients that are absorbed with those fats. So like vitamins A, D, E, and K, and then certain minerals in certain forms are better absorbed um, with fat. Um, and then HDLs also help to remove the cholesterol left behind by LDLs from the walls of arteries. So the HDLs are good because they clean up after the mess that the LDLs leave behind. Um, so cholesterol becomes a problem um, if our LDLs are too high and our HDLs are too low. Uh, so the LDL cholesterol can form plaque on the arteries if there isn't enough HDLs, if there aren't enough HDLs to clean up after the LDLs. Um, so they'll form arterial plaque, uh, which is a big problem because pieces of that plaque can break off into big chunks and then go through our bloodstream and form blockages downstream um, and form blockages so that blood is not getting to the kidneys or the brain or a part of the heart or whatever it might be and cause really catastrophic injuries that way. Um, and plaque can also kind of leak, like break off a little bit, like little pieces leaking, um, which can cause blockages in other parts of the system and can cause inflammation. Um, so treatment for high cholesterol or um, hyperlipidemia, dyslipidemia, um, regular physical activity is vital. It's of course very important, cardiovascular exercise especially, um, eating a heart healthy diet. So there's a lot of debate about what type of diet is best for your blood lipid profile. Um, so that is, is very much debated, um, but usually a low fat diet is, is what most recommend or like a Mediterranean diet. Um, but, you know, keep reading the literature because uh, there are lots of different ideas and opinions about what is actually heart healthy. Um, so it's good to keep up on the, on the research in that area. Um, and then losing weight helps improve blood lipid profile. Um, quitting smoking, improving stress management. Uh, now you may notice I didn't say reduce stress because for most of us, that isn't possible. We all uh, live our lives and are exposed to whatever stress we have. And most of us can't really lessen that. Um, to, not to a great extent and without losing things that are meaningful in our lives. Uh, so it's a matter of, of getting better at managing our stress and how we feel in response to that stress. So that is helpful. Um, and then in some cases, lipid lowering medications may be uh, required um, at doctor discretion. Uh, so benefits of exercise for hyperlipidemia and dyslipidemia um, so here we are talking about cardiovascular exercise specifically, and in the middle column, that is in response to just one exercise session, and in the right, that's in response to ongoing uh, training. Um, so the triglyceride levels decrease pretty significantly, 
um, in both cases. Uh, cholesterol and LDL cholesterol appeared not to change. Um, LV, or sorry, small dense LDL cholesterol particles, it's not very clear. Um, yeah, I'm trying to see if there's anything to discuss here. HDL cholesterol increases um, in response to a single session and into ongoing training. Um, so essentially what we see in this table is that triglycerides and HDL cholesterol, um, it responds very favorably to exercise, both a single session and ongoing training. Okay, so exercise recommendations um, to improve blood lipid profile um, are similar to what we've seen in these other conditions and in healthy adults. So activity should be daily and you want to accumulate at least 150 minutes a week um, or more as much as possible. Um, cardio, especially in um, hyperlipidemia and dyslipidemia, cardio is the priority. It's what's gonna have the greatest effect. Um, so you want to aim for at least 150 minutes of cardio and maybe even up to 300 minutes. Um, and that would be for moderate intensity, or you can go with fewer minutes, 75 to 150 with vigorous activity or some combination of the two. Um, and then aim to burn at least a thousand calories a week through cardio. Um, and you could be doing cardio up to seven days a week, but make sure that you're fluctuating in intensity so that you avoid overtraining. Um, and then resistance exercise and flexibility training, uh, just follow standard guidelines for healthy adults unless there are comorbidities present uh, that need to be considered, but you can do the, the typical two to four days a week, really uh, standard rep range, um, standard duration, and so on. All right. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.